Hello citizens of YouTube, this is the Geeky Nerd here, and today we're going to be talking about customizing your bog. <laughs> so before we get into it, I'd like to say a big thank you out to everyone who has liked, commented, and subscribed on the previous videos. Uh, always appreciate it, always enjoy talking to you guys, and always enjoy reading the comments and responding back and getting your kind of Q&A. Uh, this is one video I'm looking uh, really looking forward to because I don't think a lot of people know about this, and if you have a stripe bog, you should. <laughs> um... Also, if you're new here to the channel, welcome. If you enjoy this video, enjoy this type of content, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing. And with the PR out the way, let's get into it. So what I'm going to be talking about today is the locking block, um, solid metal locking block, lock-in charging handle block, and the short stroker recoil reduction kit. Now, both of these were uh, purchased by myself from a company called uh Cape or KD Gun Works. I'm gonna put their link in the in the description. Uh, they're small time CNC machine shop. They kind of do this on the side. It seems uh, guys over there seem you know fantastic. They're active on the on Reddit. I almost said the Reddit like an old man. Uh, um, and uh, uh, def, definitely producing some kind of good stuff. So you can check out their videos that they have uh, as far as their general overview and go check out their store. So. What I purchased in specific was first uh, the locking charging handle block. Now, why did I do this? The uh, my ultimate goal here is to kind of make the ultimate. My ultimate goal to make the ultimate um, is to make the ultimate PCC uh, p uh, pistol caliber carbine for those of you guys that don't know. And uh, with that, I'm trying to make it as reliable as durable as possible. Of course, with that is going to be weight in the form of everything being metal. <laughs> I much rather prefer things metal over polymer. Of course, I realize everything doesn't need that, uh, but certain cases it does. One of which is this. Now, the issue I'm going to describe is a very small percentage of you guys that are going to experience it, but uh, I'd rather have it than not. And that is being that the charging handle on the Strybog is directly above the barrel and it rides in this groove right here being that's plastic it can have a tendency to warp out of place so what can happen is first thing is it can sag drop and droop and not fully be able to actuate the bolt which is obviously a bad problem uh, also if you heat it up enough and you go to try to you know charge a bolt the block will actually just crush uh ju just from being hot just from being superheated so you eliminate that with this. Now, the second thing that I like is with the standard charging handle or charging block, it has a tendency just to kind of roll around, just kind of it's sloppy in there. With this having a ball bearing, it actually, and I'll show you guys how the installation of it, it actually will attach to that front inside and uh, basically keep it from jiggling around. Again, not really doing too much other than an OCD uh, saver. <laughs> so, that's this. They have a bunch over there. Uh, you can't do like the dual, you know, handle kits with it. It will only lock on one side though, but you know, you can flip it around whichever side you want. So that's that. Uh, the other thing that I really love coming from these KD, uh, Gunworks guys is this recoil reduction kit. Now they typically sell spacers, uh, or, I mean, you've seen spacers with these, uh, to where it basically eliminates the amount of travel that the bolt can go. So it reduces the amount of felt recoil. Now with the, this happens to be SP nine, a three, obviously with the roller being there, uh, which if any guys watching this know where to get an extra roller from, I don't need it, but I know it's always good to have extra rollers for a roller delay blowback system. Hit me up. <laughs> um, but uh, with this uh, reduction kit, the the SP ninety three is a fantastic gun as is, but it's competing with the direct blowback. And for for what you're getting in this, it definitely seems like it needs a little bit of help in that area to make it more softer and more. Uh, worth worthy of that extra price tag from like 650 to a thousand now while it does that in spades uh i'd say this definitely helps along now what they've done over there it doesn't look like a lot i know but it really it's ingenious as far as what it is so essentially what they've done at kd gunworks is they've machined a solid block of aluminum in the rear which is just nice just general for general uh General integrity of the system just kind of gives it more of a solid backing. Uh, this is a pistol in the current configuration. I'm going to SBR it, but we'll get on that later. Uh, and basically, here, if I can take it apart a bit without messing too much up. Come on. Uh, come on. Will it come across? Oh, no, of course, because I'm an idiot. Because I've already put it together. So you got to disassemble it first. Um, 
So <laughs> essentially how this works is uh, you have your standard recoil spring, which works fine, but then you have a secondary recoil spring. So it's like the dual capture spring you see in like the new Glocks and it goes miles ahead. It also moves that spacer a little bit farther forward. And essentially by the time it gets to all this travel, it's going to hit the soft buffer and it's going to start to decelerate even further. But then it's going to have incremental additional resistance beyond pushing the spring farther. It's going to have to push the secondary spring that rides over top of it. And while it doesn't look like a lot, my God, does it work dreams? Then it has this little uh, cut piece of rubber here to kind of um, save on the mating surfaces. That way this is wearing and not this and a little bit thicker piece of rubber. That way this doesn't get beat up. So it's a very well thought out system all in all. Now to install this, they do have a little video there uh, to kind of walk you through it. I'm going to kind of show you. So basically what I found is make sure you're in a clear room, no eyes are by. Uh, this is just a little captured spring. You're just going to pull, pull down on this and pull this off. So you see it just indexes on there and then you're going to let the spring out. I don't know why I was taking it off like an idiot. Uh, <laughs> so I ain't going to take it too far off. So it is a double, um, double captured system. So, uh, or double rod system. So, uh, basically you're going to install a little uh the flat ring it's going to come with a few parts it's going to come with this uh the spring part this little brass part this part and uh, obviously the end piece and your little end cap here is going to fit into this machine block it's going to fit with the flush um you can kind of say so you can see there how this fits that brass washer you don't want this side for that brass washer so you want to make sure that it goes um, goes on there. Actually, let's just pull this off again. Sorry guys. I'm trying to explain this as easy as I can. Uh, it's, it's the little end piece that comes standard with your current stride bog. So that's going to hold in there. Now it is going to be a tight fit. You're going to have to kind of really press it. Um, but that's kind of a good thing. Uh, second piece that you're going to put it together with, again, I'm, really, I'm not really sure what the purpose of it is, but it definitely fits in there. Again, I didn't get my degree in mechanical engineering for nothing. Uh, um, it's going to just, uh, a little brass is just going to fit right across there. Then you're going to take your little rubber piece. That's just going to slide over. It's just going to hold together just like that. And then this piece, so you're going to slide your little, um, aluminum, uh, aluminum, just spring across. You're going to put that down the rod. Now there is two sides to this. Uh, here, let me see if I can get this apart. I've shot it a bit, so it might be a little bit stuck. Yeah, it's just a bit stuck. Stop being a pansy. Uh, um, so you can see on the inside here, there is a lip. And on the other side, there obviously isn't. So you don't want it to go on this side. Reason for that is once it hits its full reduction of travel, it's going to hit here and then it's going to bind. So you're not going to have any kind of support and that spring's just going to kind of go Willy Wonka out there. You want it to actually fit inside of here and rest against that inner lip. And what that's going to do is it's going to provide additional support for the spring while still allowing it that uh, that just bit of pre-travel. So it's going to be supported by the surrounding rubber and be forcing against there instead of just kind of uh, wallowing out. Also, once it hits that final bit of travel, it's going to perfectly end up like that to where if you go the other direction, which I'm trying to show it here. Again, I'm trying to tell you guys the mistakes that I was making so you don't have to. You can see there it's not going to fully fully go all the way back. So uh, you just want to make sure you have it in that correct orientation. So Because the geek, the geeky nerd makes the mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> that just fits in there like that. Again, it's very simple, but it's so ingenious. And what is it? Uh, beauty is in the simplicity of it. So you see there in its full configuration, perfectly mates up. And everything's happy with the world. Um, let's get that back there. Wham jangle it up. So this is kind of a pain to be able to do, but you can do it. I believe in you. Just got to kind of force it down, but you can see there, once you try to force it down, that part's going to come down. So I usually just kind of press this against my chest. And hold it. So if you if you see a spring fly across the room in the next frame, you know what happened. <laughs> I'm just gonna index that back on there. Yeah. 
than fly cross. So again, you just kind of pull it down and then it will, uh, uh, it's a, it's a broached or keyed, uh, keyed entrance way. So it only fit, um, you know, fit in that one way. And there you go. You have a fully encapsulated, uh, recoil reduction system. So definitely, uh, definitely neato. Now, on the site, this is the SP ninety three Gen two. There are certain generations that you can't, you know, use it with, but you can check that out for yourself. Uh, installation, pretty straightforward. Uh, here we'll do the uh, charging handle first. So simple enough. You just take your old one out. And this one just fits right in. Slide it in there. Okay, uh, you gotta get it past that lip. And just get it past that lip. There we go. You're gonna slide it back to where it's at this uh, little keyed entrance way. Take your charger handle, which I'm gonna swap this out eventually. You're gonna line it up, and now once you do, again the gun's empty, guys, so I'm not really pointing at myself. You gotta line it up to where it just fits. So you see, it's kind of grooved in there. So you gotta line it up just to where it just goes past that and fits in between too. Give it a little pull, it's gonna be there. And you see what I mean, how it locks up. Um, definitely doesn't move as much as the other one. The bolt, this is the fun thing with the roller. You gotta get that just straight. And you're gonna line this up. Hope this doesn't get demonetized. <laughs> uh, once that, you're just gonna take your recoil system, line it up, and it's just gonna fit right in. Sorry, I gotta take it off camera to be able to see what the heck I'm doing. And there you go. You see, it fits in just like a glove. And you take your end plate as you normally would. Line that up the correct way if I can figure that out. Oh, that's the wrong way. Uh, no, that's the right way. Ugh. Come on. Push it down. Takes a bit of fiddling, guys. So I don't do it that often. Okay, put that up. And voila. It is all back together. Now, once you move it, you can actually feel, I mean, here, I don't know if I show this. So traditionally, your bolt would go a lot farther back. But here, so it goes back pretty seamlessly. But then it hits a wall right there. Pretty much right at the B read it the closest edge to the end of its travel. And then once you try to keep going farther, it gets disproportionately a lot harder. So definitely takes a lot more energy to go from here to even farther back. Uh, definitely has enough oomph to get past that little roller bearing there to be able to uh, push that bolt just a bit forward. You see what I'm talking about of when it's reciprocating that it locks it in place. Now there is a gap in between there. That gap is supposed to be there. Uh, that's to obviously keep it from beating up on this block and kind of pushing anything more farther forward. So with that, guys, uh, I'm going to leave you to it. I will have a shooting review, uh, bench rest review on this, kind of showing you guys uh, showing you guys how it works in the range and kind of trying to describe the differences to you. But I hope this video was informative. I hope it kind of answers some of your guys' questions. I, I know I had a few, but uh, again, that degree can only help so much. <laughs> but uh, with that, if you like the video, please consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing. And I hope everyone's having a wonderful, awesome, fantastic day. I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.